Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die, for God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. And the eyes of them both were opened, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together, and made themselves aprons. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden. And I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. And he said, who told thee that thou wast naked? Hast thou eaten of the tree whereof I commanded thee that thou shouldst not eat? And the man said, The woman whom thou gavest to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I did eat. And the Lord God said unto the woman, What is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. And the Lord God said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle, and above every beast of the field. Upon thy belly shalt thou go, and dust shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel." God is good, and all the time. Psalm 100, verse 5, for the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth, how long? To all generations or forever, as you correctly said. Happy Sabbath, everyone. Welcome to the first holy day of 2023. When I was a boy, you can almost guess my words. I never thought I would see 2023. I didn't think I would see 2000. It's 2023. But we thank God for having brought us this far by his grace. Can you say amen for God? God knows how to go to a long haul with his people. And because we simply will not do what is right in his sight, he has to go the long haul or he would destroy all of us. But the Lord is not willing that any should perish. Is there anyone with us today you are not a Seventh-day Adventist? May I see your hand? Your guest, you are not a Seventh-day Adventist. May I see your hand? I believe there are some who are online and wherever you are, thank you very much for joining us. The Lord will surely bless you for fellowshipping with his commandment-keeping people. Are you all right? Are you okay? All right. Our subject for today, my New Year's resolution. What did I say? My New Year's Before I get into that, remember if you're using a phone or anything else that makes a noise, be sure to turn it down so that God is not disturbed. Does God deserve reverence, yes or no? Yes, he does. Of course he does. He loves reverence. Favor number two, while I'm speaking, pray for me and say, Lord, put your words in that man's mouth. Let me tell you something about the carnal nature. The carnal nature believes it is intelligent. The carnal nature believes it has a better idea than God. That's the carnal nature. So when someone is in the pulpit, the person has to battle the carnal nature always trying to say something. Are you with me? And so you ask God to put his words in my mouth. 
You know, Samuel was a powerful prophet. He was the first great prophet. When God sent him to anoint a replacement for Saul, he came to the house of Jesse in Bethlehem, I believe, or Beth Bethlehem, I believe it was. And all the sons came before him. When he looked at the first son, he said, surely the Lord's anointed is before him. That was Samuel thinking carnally. The Lord said, no, 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 no. I don't see the way you see. I look on the heart. You look on the outside. And so we must always be vigilant to keep the carnal nature choked off. And so simply say, Lord, do what? Put your words in that man's mouth. That's based on Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 9 which says, Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have put my words in thy mouth. And favor number three, think as you listen. You know, God won't think for you. He gave you a mind. But he will bless the activity of your thinking. Think. Isaiah 118, come now, let us do what? Reason together. Let's pray. Father in heaven, as I try my level best at the human level to deliver divine things, it is obvious I need your help. I ask you first, forgive me if I've offended you today, God, because my only problem is sin, and your only problem with me is sin. Cleanse me today, God, that I might be a fit vessel in your hand. Now, Father, I surrender myself to you without reservation. Use me for your glory. Through your spirit, suppress subdue my carnal nature that your glory becomes my only aim and the blessing of your people my secondary purpose bless all those watching online bless any guest who may be joining us i pray but bless not only us wherever your commandment people are worshiping you now bless them dear god bless this nation give wisdom to the leaders remind them in all their deliberations that righteousness exalteth the nation and remind us that righteousness also exalts the individual. Hear this humble prayer to God. I offer it from my heart in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's look at God. Second Peter chapter 3, verse 9. Our subject, my New Year's resolution, is 10 minutes to 12. I'll release you by 1230. What book did I say? Second Peter, what chapter? 3, what verse? 9. Do you have that? 2 Peter 3, verse 9. And you know it very well. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to us. What I said earlier, God is in it for the long haul. Is long-suffering to us, word, not willing, what? That any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. How many people does God desire to save? Everybody. All. Let's go to 1 Timothy chapter 2. Let us read verse 4. 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 4. And that goes right along with 2 Peter 3, 9. When you found 1 Timothy 2, verse 4, say amen. amen. Who will have what? All men to be saved, finish the verse, and to come unto the knowledge of the truth. It is God's desire that all people be saved it is god's desire that all people will come to the knowledge of the truth that all people will realize ultimately that the seventh day is the sabbath not the first it is god's will the desire that truth should come to everyone so when you're conducting a bible study remember you're doing precisely what god wants because he wants that student to come to the knowledge of the truth all right Let's go to Ezekiel chapter 33. We'll read verse 11. The book of Ezekiel chapter 33. Reading verse 11. Are we there? Yeah. Say unto them, as I live, saith the Lord. It sounds like an oath he's swearing. As I live, saith the Lord. What does it say? I would have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked do what? Turn from his, yes, finish the verse, turn ye, turn ye what from your, for why will he die? I want you to live, says God. Why are you determined to die by living in sin? And so we have Second Peter 3 verse 9. The Lord is not willing that any should perish. But since he wants you to live, it's essential that you and I come to repentance. And the only thing God requires us to repent of is not the absence of a degree. You don't repent of poverty. You don't repent of the fact you have no child. 
you repent of sin. Amen. If that's clear, say amen. amen. God wants all of us to come to repentance. Without that, he cannot fulfill his desire to save us. 1 Timothy 2 verse 4, who will have all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth. Why the truth? Jesus said, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. And 1 Thessalonians 4 verse 3, this is the will of God, even your sanctification. God wants you and me to come to truth. Without truth, we cannot be sanctified. And an unsanctified person cannot be saved. And Ezekiel 33 verse 11, saying to them, as I live, saith the Lord, I have no place. It will sadden God to destroy those who are determined not to be saved. Did you hear my words? Yes. It will sadden God to destroy those who were determined not to be saved. Mm. Because a decision to go my way is a decision to be lost. Which goes contrary to God's will. Now having said all of that, we've established it is God's restless urge to save everyone. Let us go now to Exodus 32. We read from verse 31 of Exodus 32. Do you have the second book of the Bible? Exodus 32, we read from verse 31. And Moses returned to the Lord and said, Oh, this people have sinned a great sin and have made them gods of gold. Yet now, if thou wilt forgive this sin, but if not, blot me, I pray thee, out of thy book which thou hast written. Yeah. And the Lord said unto Moses, Whosoever have sinned against me, finish the verse, him will I blot out of my book. All right. Every lost person would have been blotted out of God's book somehow or never entered into it. But what is God's desire? All should be saved. All right. Think of that and think of what we just read of the book. What is God's desire for you regarding the book? It's the book of life. What is God's desire for you regarding this book? That your name should be in the book of life. And so God told Moses in verse 33 of Exodus 32, Whosoever have sinned against me, him will I do what? Blot out of my book. So your name can be in the book and removed from the book. What's my subject? Perhaps your mind is moving in the direction of what that resolution is. Your name can be removed from the book. Let's go to Revelation 3. Revelation 3, we read verse 5, all right, the preacher's wife found it first, <laughs> Revelation 3, verse 5, when you found it, say amen. amen, let me pray again, dear God, continue to be with me, possess me, dear God, but with your spirit, in Jesus' name I pray, amen. Read with me. He that overcometh, the same shall be clothed how? With right raiment. And I will not blot out his name out of the book of life, but I will confess his name before my and his angels. Jesus says, anyone who overcomes, hmm, I will brag on that person in the presence of God. The same shall be clothed in white raiment, and I will not blot out his name. If your name is in the book now, what should your desire be? Keep it in that book. Keep it in the book. Revelation 20. Let's read verse 15. Revelation 20. Our subject, my New Year's resolution. That's the... Last book of the Bible, chapter 20 of a book that has 22 chapters. We're close to the end of everything when you're reading Revelation 20. Do you have verse 15? Read with me. And whosoever, come on, was not found, written in the book, go on. Where? In lake of fire. But read verse 14. And death and hell were cast away. Where the... This is the second death. Death and hell now. Any name removed from the book of life goes exactly where death, hell, and Satan go. Read verse 10. And the devil that deceived them was cast where? 
Now, yes, yeah, so we have verse 10, the devil is cast in the lake of fire. We have verse 14, death, we have hell. Why are you where death, hell, and Satan are? Go to Matthew 25. You're out of place in hell as far as God's desire for you and me is. You are you following me? All lost people from God's standpoint are out of place in hell because that was not God's desire. What book did I say? What chapter? 25. Let's read verse 34. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, come on what? Come ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom, come on, prepared for you. For how long? From the found, well actually from before the found did, because the plan of salvation was planned long before the earth was made. Read those words again. See how nice God is. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, come ye blessed of my father, stop. Blessed by whom? The Father. You see, the Father is the highest authority in heaven. He is the vine, the Son is the vine, the Spirit is the vine, but the highest authority is the Father. Jesus said, Come ye blessed of my Father. Inherit the kingdom prepared for you before you were born. Go to verse 41. And I've told you this before. Do you have it? Read for me. Then he say unto them on his left hand, what? Depart from me, ye curse into, finish the verse, prepared for the devil and his angels. We have preparation used twice. Verse 34, verse 41. In verse 34, heaven was prepared before you and I were made for us. In verse 41, hell was prepared, but not for us. So when God desires to save you, he desires to keep you from a place he did not arrange for you Amen. and for me. Amen. You can understand the frustration of God in Ezekiel 33, 11, when he said, Why will he die? Why are you going where you're not invited? Well, yeah. <laughs> we looked at the book. Are you with me? What's the book called? The book of life. We looked at the desire of God, which is what? To save everyone in Ipsy. Yeah. Now, how should we value this? Let Jesus suggest something to us. Luke 10, let's read from verse 17. Luke 10, reading verse 17, is one minute after 12. Luke 12, Luke, sorry, not 12, Luke 10, reading verse 17. Jesus Christ had how many disciples? Tell me quickly. No, that's not true. He had a lot of disciples. <laughs> Only 12 followed him everywhere. But he also had a group of how many? 70. Now he sent this group on an evangelistic mission. Are you with me? Now they've come back to the report and to be debriefed by Christ. Verse 17, Luke 10. And, this, and the 70 return again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. What were they doing? They were what? Or oh, listen to the reply of Jesus, then you can guess what they were doing. And he said unto them, I what? Beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. What were they doing in verse 17? The devils are subject unto us. <laughs> Bragging. Mm -hmm. Jesus said, look, I knew the original bragger. <laughs> I saw him fall. Huh? Verse 19. Behold, I give it unto you power to do what? Tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. Now read verse 20 with me. Notwithstanding, in this rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you. Finish the verse. But rather rejoice. Why? Because your name. Come on. Are written in heaven now. I said earlier. How does God want us to value our name in the book? Jesus is effectively saying, don't brag because you baptized 10,000 people. Don't brag because you, you converted, you know, a high cardinal in the Vatican. You better be happy because your name is in the book of life. We rejoice over things that don't require our rejoicing. <laughs> don't rejoice over a conference president for 47 years. <laughs> yeah, I will. I will. 
<laughs> Rejoice because <laughs> your name is where? In the book of life. In other words, prioritize your, the placement of your name where? In the book of life. Value it, says Jesus Christ. Compared to baptizing some people, which is good. Compared to whatever raising up church is. Because Paul says in 1 Corinthians 9, 27. But I beat my body and bring it under subjection. Lest by any means, when I have preached to others, finish the verse. I myself should be a castaway. You can baptize the entire nation of Canada and be lost. Go to Mark chapter 6. Read verse 7. Always tell me, slow down. You never do, but you should. You're my home people. Tell me, slow down. Okay, thanks. <laughs> God bless you. You're a little late, but thanks. Okay, what book did I say? What chapter? What verse? Chapter 6, verse 7. I might have said that the wrong way. Read with me. And he what? Called unto him the twelve, and began to send them forth how? By two, and to finish the verse, and gave them power. Come on. Yes. Who is the most notorious of the twelve? Judas. The money man. The treasurer. Where is the treasurer? Judas. But listen to what the Bible says about Judas. And he called unto him the twelve. And began to send all twelve. Now not eleven. Who was given power to cast out demons? Judas and if you read the first in Matthew Christ tells them raise the dead <laughs> are you not listening to me here was a man with power to cast out demons the very demons that finally overwhelmed him but here's what Jesus prayed in John 17 12 while I was with them in the world I kept them in thy name those that thou gavest me I have kept and none of them is lost come on but the son of perdition the man who cast out demons possibly raised the dead healed the sick lost what did Jesus tell the twelve when they were bragging about the evangelistic mission rejoice that your name is where in the book what's the subject can you guess what mine is? <laughs> I want my name in and staying in the book. Can you say amen? And nothing in the world comes close to being important to me as far as having my name in that book. Are we living in the last days? Yes or no? Here's what the Bible says. Daniel 12. Daniel 12. Let's read verse 1. Seventh-day Adventists know this verse very well. Daniel 12, the most important books in the Bible, Daniel and Revelation. All the others are important, but I said the ones we need to study. Because all the other 60, 65 really find a culmination in Revelation. Daniel 12 verse 1, And at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince which standeth for the children of thy people. And there shall be what? A time of trouble. Keep reading. Such as never were. Come on. Since it was a nation, even at that same time. Listen to the words again. Always read the Bible microscopically. There shall be a time of trouble. What's the next statement? Such as never were, come on, since there was a nation. We can identify a nation all the way back to uh, the building of Babel, Nimrod, setting up his kingdom, even before. From as far back as the Garden of Eden to now, there will be a time of trouble coming on this earth, such as never was since there was a nation, even to that same time. Finish the verse. And at that time, thy children shall be delivered. Everyone that shall be found where? Written, come on, in the book. Now, this is a prophecy regarding the last days. The Bible says there will be a time of trouble. So bad. No one has ever seen it. L.Y. makes a comment that usually when people anticipate trouble, the anticipation is more terrible than the trouble itself. She says this will not be the case in the last days. No amount of the most, no exercise of your imagination can inform you how terrible it will be. The capital attack, that was a picnic. World War I was a bigger picnic. 
Korean War, Vietnam War, there is coming trouble. That's why when God's people die, we need to remember he is putting away his people. Because he sees what? They can't take it. Can't take it. Your resolution may be to join a gym or quit one. <laughs> Your resolution may be, because you can't take the hard work. Your resolution may be, I don't know, get to know your neighbors. I don't know what your resolution will be. But you and I are facing trouble. Go to Second Peter, uh, Timothy chapter 3. Let's read from verse 1. Our subject, my New Year's resolution. Second Timothy chapter 3. Let's read from verse 1. Now Paul is writing not about his day. Since sin entered the world, no day has been safe. Understand me clearly. No time in history has been safe since sin entered the world. But the world has gotten progressively worse. That's a biblical fact. 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 1. What does the Bible say? This know also that in the last days what? Perilous time shall come. Stop. Dangerous. Frightening. Times you by yourself cannot handle. Go to 1 Timothy chapter 4. Let's read verse 1. 1 Timothy 4 verse 1. Our subject, my New Year's resolution. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times, what? Some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. We will see members of the church leave. We'll see them follow doctrines that will cause us to shake our heads. That's one way God shakes the church to see who is who. He allows false doctrines. There are people who no longer come to the church physically. Even though there's supposed to be a, a safe time regarding this so-called, uh, well not so-called, but pandemic. But no one's coming back. Many are just not coming back. Was it always in them for the beginning? It took the pandemic to bring it up. There are some things in us so deep, it takes an unusual circumstance to bring it out. And we don't even know. Hey, some church member wrote me uh, last year, the year before. He said, Elder Skeet, there are members coming to church with a Confederate flag on their car. That was after Brother Trump came to, to the power. Now, it was always in them, but they needed a precipitating event. Are you following me? That's why David said, search me, O God, know my heart. There are things in us we don't know. I remember many years ago, some of you may remember, we started a, a, a prayer session where we met all day. For about a week, every day, 24 hours a day for a week. And it caused some consternation. Because some husbands were complaining, the wife's not home. It caused consternation. Then we had a problem many years ago with a certain leader. And some of us acted where we acted. One sister said to me, I never knew. Finish my words. I could, that was in me. I never knew I could behave like that. Mm. That applies to all of us. You may think, and I may think, we can handle the time of trouble. Until the supermarkets run out of water and bread, and then people start fighting. People with PhDs, pass it on, forgive me. People with uh, governmental positions. People, <laughs> they're literally fighting in the street. Why? There's no bread. There's no water. There's no whatever sardines. Mm. There's coming a time of trouble. As you make your resolution, make it in context of the times in which we live. You know, let me pray. Fathers, I continue. Please speak clearly through me, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Go to Genesis chapter 3, the reading I gave at the beginning of the presentation. Genesis 3, let's read verses 14 and 15. This is God speaking to the serpent. Genesis 3, 14 and 15. Do you have that? And the Lord God said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle, 
and above every beast of the field. Upon thy belly shalt thou go, and dust shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. Now read with me what you already know. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, between thy seed and her seed. He shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Now, this is the first introduction of the gospel. No, I don't see good times. I don't see happy times. I don't see picnics. I see hostility. I see a war between two sides. I see physical damage. It shall bruise thy head. And that's how the gospel is introduced. Because when you give your life to Christ, you have declared war. Hmm. Now, we establish biblically that God desires to save us. Let's establish something else biblically. John chapter 10, let's read verse 10. You know it very well. The thief cometh not, but for to steal, come on, to kill and to destroy. That's the devil's agenda. God's desire is to save you. Satan's desire is to destroy you. We have a conflict. And the devil will not let you be saved easily. He stays on your case, yes. (laughs) Case was the word in my mind, but thanks for saving me. He stays on your case. Are you with me? But Jesus stays on your case through the Spirit of God. Continual conviction. This is wrong. This is wrong. The devil said, nah, everyone's doing it. It must be right. Because one wants to save you, finish my word, the other wants to destroy you. And God told Moses, verse 33, Exodus 32, Whosoever have sinned against me. That's our problem. (laughs) Sin. Him will I blot out of my book. Let me tell you something frightening. That blotting out is taking out, not taking out place right now. What's it called? The investigative judgment is going on right now. When did it begin? This side, 1844. What month? What day? Mm-hmm. You look shocked and surprised. Are we Adventists? Yes or no? Well, this is fundamental to our teachings. The investigative judgment, the decision to remove names or leave names, is going on now. The Father is the judge. Jesus is the advocate. But since the Father and the Son are one, that's what Jesus said. Whatever Jesus says, the Father says, fine. That's why you need Jesus to speak for you. Are you sleeping with your eyes open? No. Okay. Let me say it again. There is a judgment going on in heaven right now. While you and I worry about the playoffs, there's a judgment going on in heaven right now. While some sister wants to outdress the other sister, there is a judgment going on in heaven right now. While some brother wants a a, a nicer looking ride than the other brother, there is a judgment going on in heaven right now. What's the subject? My New Year's resolution. Jesus told the disciples, and by extension he tells me, don't rejoice because you cast out a demon. Of course, that's part of your work. If you come, by the way, it's not a ministry. If in doing the Lord's work you come across it, you've got to act. Are you following me? It's not a ministry. <laughs> don't go looking to do that. Don't. <laughs> You might like what you find. Don't rejoice because of this or that earthly accomplishment, which may be good in and of themselves. But with respect to priorities, Jesus talks about the weightier matters of the law. Look at the Ten Commandments. The first four are higher than the next six. Jesus said that. In so many words, he said that. When the scribe said to him in Mark 12, which is the first commandment, Jesus said, the first of all the commandments is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind, with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. And the second is, love thy neighbor. We see that in the Ten Commandments. Jesus said, he that loveth father and mother more than me is not worthy of me. And father and mother on the second table, not the first. The 
God first. Mm -hmm. No wonder the first commandment says, thou shalt have before me. And if you have none before him, you won't have any after him. Because you have a God after him, that God is really before him. I am the only God you must have. God wants you and me saved. But the name must be where? In the book of life. And that name can be removed. Here's what's also startling. When the name is removed, God does not send you a text. No, he doesn't. That's why we are to live faithfully when? Today. Somebody asked me, in, uh, I was at a, last week somewhere, how do we prepare for the time of trouble? I said, prepare today. Are you ready to die today? If you're not ready to die today, you're not ready for the time of trouble. Today. As Adventists, we're people of prophecy. Am I right? Yes. 25, the, 20, the, the 2300 day prophecy, the 1290, 1335, 470, we're people of prophecy. Ellen White said the most important text in the Bible for us is uh, Daniel 8, 14, under 2300 days. Then shall us, we're people of prophecy. So we tend sometimes to live in the future. When is the time of trouble coming? When will the day of probation come or the close of probation? When will the plagues fall? When will the sun the law be passed? When will I run to the country? And we ignore today, not realizing you can drop dead <laughs> today. And what happened to the time of trouble? And what happened to the Sunday law? What happened to the beast? Today, without forgetting what's coming down the pipe. Because a knowledge of what is to come should contribute to our preparation today. My New Year's resolution. I want my name in that book. And I want my name to remain in that book. Does that mean I ignore day-to-day -day responsibilities? A absolutely not. But I do them within the proper context. What does Jesus say? What is a man profited if what? He gains the whole world and loses his soul. I've told you before, Jesus didn't say don't gain the world. If we can gain the world, the world will be blessed. Because we're God's people. Are you with me? He says don't gain it at the expense. Which means the preservation of your soul is more valuable than the entire world. And God wants you saved. Because this world will be destroyed. For one reason only, it has been contaminated by sin. Anything contaminated by sin must eventually be destroyed. And so you have perhaps resolutions to make. I recommend one resolution to you, Father... By your abiding grace, help me to so live that my name remains in the Lamb's book of life. Go to Revelation 13, let's read verse 8, and I'm sliding to the end. Revelation 13, let's read verse 8. Here's a group of people. There are two groups in that verse. A large group and a small group. Let's see if you can identify them. Father in heaven, as we come to the end of the message, please continue to speak through me that I may speak for you as I speak to your people. In Jesus' name, amen. Revelation 13, verse 8. When you found it, say amen. amen. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him. Meaning the beast of Revelation 13 from verse 1. That beast is like a leopard, a bear, a lion. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him. Keep reading. Whose names are not written in the book of life of the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. Now I said we have two groups in that. What are the two groups? Name the first one. All those that worship him. But what do we know about them? Their names are not written in the book. Which means there must be a group. Come on, there must be a group. Whose names, come on, are written in the book. So we have two groups in that verse effectively. Otherwise, said there are only two, two uh, classes in the world today. And only two classes will be recognized in the judgment. Those who violate God's law and those who obey it. It's very, very simple. You see, the gospel makes everything simple. You're lost because of sin. You're saved by the righteousness of Christ. Let me say it differently. You're lost because of your sin. You're saved because of Christ's righteousness. I didn't say it clearly. Your sin. 
gets you lost. Christ's righteousness gets you saved. Is that clear enough? Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. So I am responsible for being lost. Jesus, with my cooperation, is responsible for my being saved. Which one do you want? How many will say with me, Father, by your grace, help me so live that my name day by day remains in the book of life. Can I see your hand? That my, stand with me. That my name remains in the book of life. And this is no joke. There is a book. There are books in heaven. Books. Let me give you Revelation 20:15 again. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. This is not designed to scare you. It is designed to allow you to rethink. In 2022, did I live as if my name was in the book of life? If I didn't, and only you and God can assess that. Let me so live, beginning today, that God will keep my name or put it in <laughs> and then by his power keep my name in the book of life Amen. see when God punished Cain Cain said my punishment is greater than I can bear he, now God will have a book <laughs> you can't accuse me falsely look this is what you did actually you're not getting as much as you deserve says God and to the saved he'll say look this is what you're getting you're getting more than you deserve both sides, the lost and the saved, the lost and the saved. But God's focus is to save. Can you say amen? amen? The Lord is not willing that Ipsy should perish. That applies globally. That applies personally. So when you read that verse, 2 Peter 3, 9, the Lord is not willing that Randy should be lost. The Lord is not willing that Debbie should be lost. The Lord is not willing that Josephine should be lost, but that we all should be saved. Let me ask you again, how many of you want your name in that book? Can I see your hand? Hands down, heads bowed. Father in heaven, we thank you for the simplicity of truth. We thank you that God, there is a book that contains the names of the saved, but the names can be removed by sin. Please, God, give us that divine common sense to cooperate with you that our names might remain in the book of life because the names in that book have been bought by a terrible price the suffering the death of jesus christ father as we make our resolutions for this new year let us make them in the context of the fact that we are close to a time of trouble that is so terrible and only those who are attached to you We'll make it through. Please, God, give us an appreciation for the spiritual above everything else. That a life we live on every other level may make more sense. When you come, save every person under the sound of my voice, along with their families, I pray. In Jesus' name, let God's people say, Amen and Amen. You may be seated.